The margin of global financial safety net that's supposed to help countries in crisis will end up creating tension between governments and their people. That is the story of IMF and its condition. Today, we are going to break down how its condition impacts developing countries differently than developed nations and why this condition often work against the very people that they are supposed to help, that is, the citizen. Let's start with a story from the past. Picture the aftermath of World War II. The world was in chaos, economic were shattered, and there was a desperate need for stability. That was when the International Monetary Fund, that's the IMF and the World Bank, were born. Their mission was to rebuild war-torn economies and ensure global financial stability. That sounds noble, right? But how did this institution evolve from being a global stadium to the controversial entity we all know them today? Originally, the IMF was designed to help countries stabilize their economy by providing short-term financial assistance. The World Bank, on the other hand, focused on long-term development projects like building infrastructures. Over time, their role expanded, but so did the complexity and the controversy surrounding their operations. Now, this is where things get interesting. Do the IMF and the World Bank treat all countries the same when offering loans? Not exactly. When developing countries seek loan from the IMF or the World Bank, they face stringent conditions. These conditions are supposed to ensure that the borrowing nations can repay its debts. But the IMF conditions are much harsher compared to those given to developed countries. Developed nations are typically given favorable conditions and enable them to maintain a better economic stability. While on the other hand, developing nations, desperate financial aid, often have to agree severe austerity measures. So, what exactly are these conditions and why do they often lead to unrest? IMF conditions usually include measures like privatization of state-owned assets, removal of subsidy on essential goods, opening of domestic markets to foreign competition, reducing tariff and devaluation of the national currency. Let's break this down. Privatization of state-owned assets. This means selling private enterprise to private investors. Why this can improve efficiency? It is often lead to job loss and higher prices for essential services. Most often the state assets are bought by foreign entity. That is the intricacy behind sales of state-owned assets. Same as the tool of nuclearization, industry where America and the Russian or the Chinese government maintain dominance to them are state-owned assets. Think about subsidy on essential items like fuel, food. Removing this subsidy makes things more expensive. Eating the poorest other in Nigeria, first of all, has been a contentious issue. When subsidy was removed, fuel prices rose up to over 400% leading to a widespread inflation on commodities and the government appears to be ignoring the plea of the common man, pitching the people against its leaders. I would recommend Nigeria to move subsidy in all ramifications. The IMF was accusing the British government of not investing enough in education and health. This same agency, this same, this Bretton Wood institutions, asking our government to remove all subsidies and impose a rush of increases on goods and services in our country. Open up local market to foreign competitors sound good on paper. What happens when local businesses can't compete? In Nigeria, small and middle enterprises struggle to survive against cheaper foreign imports. This leads to business closure and loss of jobs, undermining the local economy and causing public frustration reducing tariff. This can lead to a flood of cheaper imported goods, undercutting local producers and harming the domestic economy. Currency devaluation. Devaluing the currency can make a country's export cheaper and more competitive. However, it also makes imports more expensive, driving up the cost of living. In Nigeria, the recent currency devaluation has led to a higher price of essential goods and services, affecting everyone, but especially out in the poor. People feel the pinch in their daily lives, leading to increased dissatisfaction with the government. This condition can be devastating, especially for the vulnerable population. What if a country says no to IMF terms? Let's dive into this consequence. Refusing IMF condition can lead to severe financial repercussion. The country might be cut off from international financial markets, making it nearly impossible to get loans from other sources. This can result in deepening economic crisis, upper inflation, and diplomatic currency value, essentially. It is a rock and hard place scenario. Take Argentina in the early 2000s, for example, they defaulted in their debt and faced years of economic hardship, including skyrocketing inflation and massive 
unemployment. On the flip side, countries like Greece, Ghana, and Brazil, which accepted IMF condition, experienced prolonged austerity and public protests. So, let's look at some real example of how this condition has played out in Nigeria and by station Africa. In the late 80s, Nigeria experienced severe economic downturn, heavily due to IMF imposed structural adjustment. This includes the removal of subsidy, privatization of state owned assets, and resulting on social unrest and economic instability, which caused significant political tension. In Zambia, IMF recommended privatization of the copper industry, claiming it would boost efficiency. What was its result? Massive job loss and deteriorating working conditions for its citizens, leading to a widespread discontent among the population. This shows how IMF has pitched government against their people. But how can this be turned around? So, can countries use debt effectively without falling into these traps? The key is strategic borrowing and transparent governance. Countries need to ensure that borrowing money is invested in projects that promise real return and long-term development, strengthening institutions to manage and oversee. The use of funds can help navigate the negative impact of IMF condition. Thanks for watching. Please, if you find this video insightful, please click on the like button and also comment how you feel the IMF has pitched the citizens against their government. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please click on the subscribe button to keep receiving impactful content from us.